So, in this video we created the email tablet, table basically, so let's just move our card over to the testing area and let's have a look at the results. So, the idea here was just to create a table that can handle, represent the different things that we want and this is a simple, ba uh, simple implementation of the, like the, well, Google Mail's own layout here. So the requirements that we've had so far is just to be able to mark something as important because otherwise nothing's going to be under this tab here. And then we have some subject and a snippet from what's actually in the email itself and the date. And that's about it really. So if we have a look at the code, basically we created this inbox component and let's just walk through that first and foremost. So the inbox component itself is going to have to require some, like the emails themselves. And we've just make, made a stub implementation here where we make a fetch call to our server where we can grab the emails and let's just look at that. So we created, we have this emails endpoint where I've just added some static data that we can now have to just represent the data that's coming from the server. Once the actual interactions on the client side and like all that is done, we will actually declare real, real proper models and go to the database and do all that good stuff. But for now that's good enough because we really only need to get something back and then we get our JSON and then we have this little sort function and all that kind of does is that yeah it's just a function that sorts based on the timestamp which we of course have ha added some unit tests for once again which is like th this is just fairly standard practice at least like this is what I like to do guys if it is logic it should be unit tested it's just the way that it should be done if you're working professionally and then we have our like we've sorted our emails and then we do a conversion where we take the incoming email that's coming from the network and converting that to a model now the way the reason why I do this is because of this basically where the component like this is not necessarily something you have to do, it's something that I've found through a lot of trial and error to be a very effective way of avoiding a lot of bugs and issues. So the idea here is that you declare a model that your component is going to interact with and in this case you already know what you want to show in the table data. We already know for example that we're going to have a subject, we know that we need a body, we need a date or a timestamp of some sort and we also need a way to represent if a person has marked an email as important and we also need to this gray color here for example we need to that illustrates if a user has actually clicked or interact with this uh, this email they, have they actually read it now all these properties that's stuff that you know from just looking at the interface that you are going to have to have on the model so what I do is that I create a front-end model that is going to be the thing that basically is going to take whatever comes from the server and map that over to that state and what that allows me to do is to actually declare whatever model I want on the front end without needing to know what the server is doing. The server is just responsible for giving me the data that I need and if that matches perfectly that's great. If it doesn't map, map perfectly then at least my application isn't going to break and I can still format the data in the shape that I want it to go. So basically that's what happening. what's happening here because if we look at, for example, this one, format timestamp. So what's going to happen is that the timestamp that's going to come over from the network, which we saw here from the data. Now the timestamp is just a, it's just a number, but the way that we represent it to a user is in this format. So that's something that we need to account for and that's where this kind of mindset comes in where the client shouldn't care about what the server is sending, it should simply know what it wants to show to the user and take whatever the server is giving it and format it into the shape or put it in the shape that it needs to be. So that's what we're doing here. We're basically just grabbing the timestamp that as is trying to convert it and then doing some string formatting in order to put out the date and the time in this format as, that we saw in the table. And if something goes wrong we log out that error and just return a empty value. And that way we can be sure that our application will always work and not break because something changed on the server. So that's, ba that's basically it. And then we set our state which is just going to hold the emails and we loop over all of our emails and map them into a row and for we just we are using material UI's table and 
table row, I could just table layouts basically for this. And then as we can see here, we're set, we're checking if the email has a viewed at date, and then we set different CSS classes depending on if it's been viewed or not. And then I've added a little bit of a helper function here on our paths that helps us out with just formatting the email the URL. And yeah, and then we wrap each table cell and style it a little bit, and then we put a link around it because we want to be able to just click on email and go to a page which we are going to create in the future, which is just going to be the place where you read an email basically. And then we have this little thing here which we call a uh, inbox row icons which is just a section where basically this section here which holds the icons that we're going to interact with now in our scenario here we're just going to use the star to represent that something is important but you can expand on this as well if you wanted to support all of these different variations of things you can do which might be something we want to do in the future but since this is an mvp or a minimum viable product we simply want to be able to do this the bare bone minimum which is to mark something as important and that is yeah i think that's basically it we've touched on most of what's been happening so far and in the next video we're going to have a look at yeah we're, we're just going to move the next card we can do it right now so next up is going to create be to create the, the composed email dialog so we can actually create emails